All right, let's get it. Any news? Episode two, season two, re-zero cut content, and it says Roswell secrets. Ooh, I have been dying to know exactly what this perv clown has been up to, because all of his actions just again directly contradict what he said of making him the you know the queen slay the dragon. But he's just letting Super just do everything. He's just fucking off. Let's see what Annie News has to say. Considering that episode two marks the beginning of a brand new arc, arc it four. Makes that's sense right. That this episode. What is it called? Is a name for the arc? The Everlasting Contract. And this girl is the girl, Echidna is the person that uh, Puck made an oath with, right? It was mentioned in Frozen Bond. This is her, the same voice actor. Beginning of a brand new arc. It makes sense that this episode would mm -hmm. be a lot more tame compared to the last. There was a lot of exposition that needed to be done in order to introduce the new setting and characters. I mean, up until now, we've never even heard of this place called Sanctuary. Yep. We weren't even... Well, we heard of it, like, once, I think, in Season 1, but it was, like, never given any content. And we heard it when Roswell, apparently, after, you know, the whale subjugation, it was directly stated that Roswell's now headed to the Sanctuary. And then the next time is when Ram took all the villagers, not all of it, but some of them, half of them, to the villagers to be safe during, you know, the witch's cult invasion. Been made aware that Roswell had taken half of the villagers there. Yeah. So, there were quite a few gaps that needed to be filled in with this episode. More than anything, though, the main focus was the mystery revolving around Roswell's actions. Yes. Something that the novel delves into a bit more deeply, which will- Oh, I'm so high. And like the only hint we got of Roswell's actions of like what he's up to is the dialogue with Biko when she quote unquote, you know, she doesn't kill Subaru, but that's the run where Amelia dies because Subaru tries to, you know, um, tell her the truth and Satala does that. And then there's some dialogue with, uh, what was the other scene? No, I think that's one of the few moments where it's about Roswell's future being secured. Exploring this cut content episode. So, as always, be sure to leave a like or comment if you enjoy Will this zero content. It really goes towards helping the video perform better. Now? Uh, likes and comments, honestly, it doesn't matter. It does. It doesn't hurt. But, like, getting more likes in a video is not the thing that's going to make your video pop up. At the end of the day, it's just watch time. How long the people watched it, how much people clicked onto it when the thumbnail was shown on the homepage, impression click-through rate, watch time, the two most important signals for, you know, like engagement stats. Likes and comments, it's nice, I guess, but for the most part, this is just a lot like community building, right? By having people comment all the time and have it like, right? It kind of builds this like uh, team bonding experience. Other people argue, other people talk about, you know, their favorite things and it's, it's more of that. And then that directly then supports more of people checking the video out because now you've built a community and an identity there. So the likes and comments don't directly help, but it indirectly definitely helps with the creation of the community. Let's begin. But first. Episode 27. Never mind. The next place. Covering chapters 1 and 2 of volume 10 of the light novel. Okay. There were quite a few reasons leading towards Krush and Subaru going their separate ways. We know that Subaru and Amelia had to return to the... Why does this say Krush like that? He really just rolls that R in the most, like, aggressive way. <laughs> I'm like, Krush, I'm like, Jesus. Mansion. But Krush also had a few things to take care of herself. Yeah. And that was the pressing issue of Anastasia's faction. If Krush wasn't... Anastasia's crotch shading is more aggressive in the light novel car art, too. Look at that, bro. Look at the line. You can see her belly button. Look at the line, bro. <laughs> Even Chibi Anastasia, same, bro. <laughs> if Krush wasn't careful with her next actions, then Anastasia could very well steal all the credit for defeating both the White Whale and Sloth. Ideally, the whole endeavor would be treated as a successful joint operation from each of the three participating candidates. Mm. But it was... And who got the most out of, you know, the alliance? Of the three participating candidates, Krush lost the most, I think. Anastasia probably got the most out of it. Well, she did lose members of the private army, but she did get, you know, the mining rights, Roswell shit, you know, Ru Russell Fellas, you know, he was working with that, and the media. Has the media now been handed over to Russell Fellas? Can we now say that we don't have the Nokia flip phone anymore? Because that was the thing that Russell, you know, wanted, right? So no more media? Rip media. But it was very clear that Anastasia was the one that came out on top. Yeah, it does Her seem like it. Her faction still had both their candidate and knight completely mm -hmm. intact. 
a statement that couldn't be said for Kanusha's or Amelia's side. So, very close watch needed to be kept on Anastasia. The only advantage- Such a shrewd, cunning businesswoman, man. Ruthless. And yes, she did help out, but she got out at the perfect time, too. She just timed everything so perfectly, bro. The only advantage these two had over her was the secrecy of their current alliance. True. Anyway, after about three days, Subaru didn't want to keep the villagers away from their home any longer. You see, during the commotion of the evacuation, many villagers had been separated from their families as half of them were taken to a different area. So, it was before they were about to leave that Wilhelm came out to give his regards. That's when the topic of his incurable oh, yes. wound came up again. Bro, they don't mention it in the anime! They don't mention it in the anime, not even episode 2. Why? This is an insane setup. This is, like, I can't even, like, begin to emphasize how significant of a setup this is. This potentially leads into Teresia coming back or someone else with the blessing of the Grim Reaper. Like, this is absolute bonkers that the anime is not setting this up as foreshadowing early on. ...of his incurable wound came up yet again. In case you didn't watch episode 1, Wilhelm carries a permanent wound that can't be healed The cuts in season 1 are more severe? Oh, fuck me. How should we get those cut content? Is it the only way to get the cut content through the Witch's Cult uh, forum? Because we have the... We could just read out... Like, I could just straight up read that shit out like fucking audiobook style. But I thought that shit only covers like the most important cut content. Does it have like a compilation of everything? Because someone said... Because like last time, remember? I said uh, episode one, I think that the cut content was... Uh, Rem versus Lie and Regulus, that shit was anime only, so that actually never happened, but that was like a distinction, but... I think that, um, we'll probably have to do- we'll, we'll definitely be farming Witch's Cult translations. Yes, we will be. Since it was inflicted by a blade that carries the blessing of the Grim Reaper. A wound that was- See, this is again very confusing because Anini said the blade had the blessing, right? I thought that Teresi had the blessing, and some other people were saying, no, it's not the blade, it's the Teresia, but Aninius is still saying that the blade has the blessing. A wound that was given to him by none other than the previous sword saint. Why would that happen? Right? I'm still going to believe that the, uh, it's Teresia with the Grim Reaper blessing, right? And let's think about this. Why the fuck would Teresia intentionally give Wilhelm an injury like that when we have the blessing of the Grim Reaper? Does that make any sense to you? No, unless she got tired of his ass for never saying I love you and was like, you're a fucking deadbeat husband. Fuck you. I'm gonna cut you up. Now, that's a meme theory. Of course, that's not what happened. Let's think about it more seriously. An accident? I doubt it. How about this? The craziest tinfoil theory that I had last night when I was thinking to myself, sometimes late at night, I get high as fuck and I just like watch a ReZero random scenes, and just, like, theorize. And I came to this conclusion. What if the cut was intentionally given because Wilhelm and Theresia knew that they would be separated? For whatever reason, there would have to be a moment where Wilhelm had to find Theresia after she went away. And by having a mechanic like this, the blessing of the Grim Reaper, open up the closer he gets to Theresia, or the one with the blessing of the Grim Reaper, then one could conclude that, yes, this was an intentional cut because they anticipated for the future were a situation where they need to reunite, but she goes away. I don't know. I don't understand why his wife would intentionally cut him with that blessing. That shit makes no sense unless it was intentional because this is an... It's, it's definitely a way to get to know. It's like a radar, right? The closer you get, the more the injury opens. Another theory... The another theory... <laughs> I might make a separate video for this is... <laughs> People think that Lai is Wilhelm and Theresia's son. Which makes no sense. Many, there's multiple reasons why it makes no sense. First of all, the kid's fucking ugly. The hair color does not match. He's 13 years old. Wilhelm is way too old for that. It, it, I'll, I'll make a separate video for that. But there's a lot of fun theories. There's a lot of fun theories. And they think that like gluttony finally showing up is how Wilhelm's injury opened up. There's a lot of dumb tinfoil theories that I'm willing to entertain. You guys think it's stupid. I agree. Right? But, but, it's still fun to really think about and meme about it. His former wife. The thing is, up until the fight with the witch's cult, the wound- See, what I actually think is, Lai has the jagged teeth, because he's a demi-human, right? Just like Frederica. I think that Teresa cheated on Wilhelm with the fucking beast because Wilhelm is a deadbeat husband and never said I love you. 
remained in a rather closed state. Okay. Only after his encounter with them did it open up as if it was fresh. Yes. This was something that was only possible if he was in close proximity to the person who gave him the wound. Yes, Theresia. So it was a very significant mystery involving his supposedly dead wife that Wilhelm was now unsettled by. Man. Perhaps the white whale may not have been responsible for Theresia's death at all. Perhaps something a bit more sinister happened. Whoa! And that's the craziest thing. And and I think I need to I need to stop doing this, right? I think one of the things that prevents me from really fear crafting is I get stuck in a box. And the box that I'm stuck in right now is the whale killed Teresia. Because the anime told me. So I take that as a fucking fact. And now I'm limited in my theory crafting. But what if that's not the case, right? So I need to really make like an active decision. Like have to have the presence of mind. You always distrust what the enemy is telling me. By doing so, I can step out of the box and see through different perspectives rather than tunnel vision because the author could be intentionally misleading me. Absolutely. Now, let's look at the light novel cover. You got Theresia, Wilhelm, old as fuck, Reinhard. This guy down here? He looks evil. <laughs> look at his face. Something about him does not invoke, like, trust. I see his face. He looks like an evil Von Astrea. Whatever the answer was, the only person who could possibly give it to him was going to be Gluttony, a foe he was sure to encounter once again if they truly intended to fix both Kruish and Rem. Maybe. No. And <laughs> remember, <laughs> some people think that this is the son of Theresia and Wilhelm. Nah, bro. Theresia got some fucking back shots by a witch fiend beast, and then this is the product of it. That's my theory. Or <laughs> to encounter once again if they truly okay. intended to fix both Kruish and Rem. All right. During Subaru's conversation with Felix, there was a brief moment where Felix showed his true emotions. It was a sight to him that Subaru had never seen before. One that was different from the unconcealable kind grief of that Felix could be seen harboring for the past few days. While Subaru was trying to genuinely thank Felix for all his help, the two began to go back and forth with their usual friendly banter. Yeah. But it was towards the end that Felix took a more serious tone. Uh oh. He lowered his head, then spoke in a very ominous voice that he was going to protect Ktush no matter what. They were words declared in such a way that Subaru didn't even realize that it was Felix who was talking. Felix dropped the ooh catboy voice. No more ooh 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 ooh. And it was like, Subaru, I will protect Ktush. Just like how the 200 year old Kirito. In season 4 of SAO, you know how he's talking? Just complete tone shift. Felix dropped the fucking trapped femboy catboy voice. Though it only lasted for a brief moment, that was really all it took for Subaru to clearly understand Felix's resolve. After this, it wasn't just Krush who gave parting words at the end. Amelia had a few things to say herself. How is Krush gonna protect- sorry, how is Felix gonna protect Krush? Krush has no attacks. I'm a little confused on what Krush did to Subaru though. In that run, the heroic run where Julius killed uh, Subaru. What did Cruz, What did Felix do there? Did he do the same thing what Bieko did to Subaru in the beginning of Arc 2? What was that? Does anyone know? Because Felix like touched Subaru and then he got all fucked up. I thought that Felix messed around with the mana, distorted, kind of like what Bieko did to Subaru in the beginning of Arc 2. Self which carried a bit of significance. With a strong sense of sincerity, she declared that whatever the results of Subaru's actions may be, she would face them head on. Mm. It was proof of her finally accepting- He boiled Subaru's blood? How does that work? You tell me Felix is a bloodbender? Bl like fucking waterbender? He can control like water temperature? Or he infused mana into him and-, <laughs> and well, It's water magic, sure. Sure, I'll take that. Accepting Subaru to be by her side. Yeah, it the dra the draining mana is specific to a spirit, right? Because I like, think about it. Bieko and Puck was the two examples given when talking about who can drain the mana. Not even Roswell can do it. And why is that? Because these are spirits, right? We know Puck and Bieko are spirits, right? And what are spirits? Well, they make contract with humans or some other things for spirit art. What are spirit art users? They don't just use the mana from within. They suck the mana from the atmosphere. So there is this property of being able to suck the mana from sources. Therefore, it's the same concept of why Bieko and Puck can suck the fucking mana out of Subaru. Well, Roswell can't is my interpretation. If you were to now call Subaru something akin to her knight, well, that wouldn't be so much of a wrong statement anymore. Amelia then turned directly to Klush and lost what was just her resolute composure. 
She was much more anxious as she knew that Ktush would one day become someone she would have to compete against. Even so, the alliance they'd built was something that she was happy with. So, she wanted to make sure that Ktush was okay with her being a half-elf. Remember, Amelia isn't used to receiving this type of positive treatment from other people. True. She's not so confident in herself as a person to believe that others think highly of her. That's why she wanted to make sure that Ktush wasn't forcing herself. The desperate look that Amelia had on her face while she asked made Subaru want to intervene. Would Krush even understand? Like, like, hold up. Does Krush understand the, the, the stigma of half-elves? She lost the memories. How much memories? I'm not sure. Her sense of self is gone. But like, does that mean she also forgot the customs, the cultures of the kingdom? How the fuck would she know if a half-elf is good or bad here? How much of the memory was eaten? I, I don't know. But for some reason he knew that Ktush would know exactly what to say. She responded with a line that he'd heard from her once before. A pretentious set of words that only someone like Ktush can speak as her own. She said, The worth of a soul is determined by the worth of a person's actions. Hmm. We should all live in a way that brings no shame to our souls. Because Amelia then said that she was living her life in a way that she didn't believe to be shameful, Grush felt that there was nothing for her to fear or regret. Handshake. So long as she continued to walk a path that she could call her own, then- What the fuck? This scene was so impactful! In the anime, it was a quick handshake bye, and then Krush reached out to Subaru for handshake, and then he looked at Amelia, blushed, and was like, tapped the hand and left, because I thought that he, he thought that this was like cheating in front of Amelia or something, but what the hell? Krush was happy to be allied with her. So, as Subaru watched these two formally accept each other, he finally felt like he had gained something tangible from all his efforts. Sure, it may not have been the optimal outcome, but it was definitely the- Optimal outcome. Optimal outcome, subskill. One of the two subskills used in MasterChef, Tensura Shion. Best he could get given the circumstances. And he wasn't going to use Rem as an excuse to ruin this moment. That wouldn't be what she wanted. Instead, he accepted Rem and Kurusha's conditions as direct results of his actions. And he promised that he'd find a way to make things right again. This was such an embarrassing proclamation that Subaru couldn't even fully shake Kadusha's hand afterwards. I see. That makes a lot more point. Like, see, when I saw this scene, I thought he was blushing, and he thought that the handshaking in front of Amelia was like too lewd, and he didn't want to cheat on his, you know, Discord kitten. That's why he tapped the hand. But one more time, explain that to me. In this moment, that wouldn't be what she wanted. Instead, he accepted Rem and Kadusha's conditions as direct results of his actions. Yeah. And he promised that he'd find a way to make things right again. This was such an embarrassing proclamation that Subaru couldn't even fully shake Kadusha's hand afterwards. I see. Instead, he simply tapped her palm. Moving on to the scene in the carriage, there was a couple additional topics of conversation worth mentioning. One of which was Roswell. Ooh. Not only was he some- That- <laughs> that fan art goes hard. That- no, that's not fan art. Is that from like a mobile game? What is this? This art of Roswell goes crazy. Truly Demon Lord material, man. Not only was he someone worth talking to about Rem's condition, but he also had quite- Oh man, this specific scene is so good. This smile. This fucking smile when Subaru fucked up. Remember, how does it make sense that someone that wants Amelia to win the throne is smiling that Subaru fucked up and made Amelia look bad, right? Like, every time, and he was so funny, he was like, yeah, Subaru, you should come to the kingdom with us, yep. And then he always, like, diffuses the situation with this clown mannerisms and says, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's all fine, Subaru, yeah, just join us in, and this is all planned. He wanted this to happen. Worth talking to about Rem's condition, but he also had quite a bit of explaining to do. There were two key things that Subaru wanted to know. The first of which was why he chose to back Amelia for the royal selection. Very good idea. And even beyond that, how did you even know Amelia and Puck existed in the White Forest, right? Because he went there. We saw Puck and Roswell kind of like spar and fight in Memory Snow, right? But like, Roswell picked them up. And Puck was okay with it too. So, uh, I don't know. And the second was why he didn't come to help when the witch cult attacked. Exactly. You're just gone. Anytime we need you, you're gone. Now, you did show up at the very end and saved our ass after we tried Shamak on the big bald bad dog, and then he came down with Ulgoa and saved us, right? He carpet bombed the witch fiends. Great. He showed up at the very end. But it's like, this motherfucker, he doesn't do anything. He just lets Subaru just like 
it's, it's just Subaru doing everything, and I get it, but like Roswell still exists. He's Amelia's sponsor. You would think that he would put some fucking work in. No, he's always gone. Intentionally? Coincidence? I don't know. Subaru found it strange that someone with as much power as Roswell was nowhere to be seen when his own domain was oh, under siege. fuck! It was a valid question considering how much he had at stake. But the answer to it was something that could only be found back at the mansion. Not really. <laughs> Cause then... Cause the answer lies in Biko, but then Biko says, The answer is you want is in the sanctuary, so we gotta fuck off to the sanctuary. Until then, Amelia wanted Subaru to tell her more about Rem. At first, the mere suggestion caused Subaru's chest to throb in pain. Not because it wasn't something he wanted to do, but instead because he wasn't sure if he could truly find the right words to say. How could he properly portray the girl who saved him in a way that would do her justice? If only Amelia could watch season 1 anime ReZero with us. He eventually figured that the best way would be to just start at the beginning. So, Subaru spent the rest of the trip talking about the precious memories he made with Rem for the past two months. Even episode 7? When Rem tortured you? <laughs> I wonder if he included that. Probably not. That's how long it had been since Subaru was summoned to this world. Two months only, As huh? As Subaru spoke of his day-to-day -day life with Rem. Damn! Two months for that much character development to understand his flaws is quite amazing. Two months is a quite two months is a pretty decent amount of time, but like for people to really undergo change and realize their faults and move forward, like, and it's not just two months, right? There's also all those different regressions where he loops. So two months for the perfect run, but a lot more time involved for all those failure runs. Before he could even finish everything he wanted to say. Half a day had already passed and they'd now arrived at the village. But the other half of the villagers were nowhere to be found. It was yet another odd situation that was potentially attributed to one of Roswell's decisions. Yes, and he intentionally sent a letter to Frederica and told her exactly what to do, right? Frederica made a note of that at the end of episode 2 and I was like, oh my god, Roswell planned this too. He wants to bring Subaru to the sanctuary. Why? I got no clue. There was no way that he wasn't yet aware of the village being safe again. Even if Sanctuary was seven or eight hours away by horse, Roswell could easily just fly and fly. do some yeah. in the area. This dude flies! Not to mention that Ram could have also just used her clairvoyance ability. True! So, the fact that they'd been gone for more than three days now was something that just didn't seem right. There had to be a specific reason why Roswell chose to stay at Sanctuary. Perhaps some- To bring Subaru and Amelia here. It was all part of the letter in Frederica's, right? Thing had happened to them while they were there. In any case, Subaru figured that if answers were to be found, then the best place to do that would be at the mansion. It was here that we met the new maid Frederica Bauman, a demi-human girl who looked no more than 20 years old, but- And remember, her teeth looks just like Lai, right? When I see jagged teeth, now I immediately think demi-human, Lai, Archbishop's sin of gluttony, probably is a demi-human, or I'm being baited by the fucking jagged teeth. Carried herself as perfectly as a maid could. Now, there was a cut scene Ooh. between just her and Subaru right before he went to go talk to Beatrice. Okay. You see, Subaru wanted to let Rem rest in her own room. So, while he was carrying her there, Frederica decided to accompany him so that she could learn more about this sleeping girl. Subaru spoke to her just like how he'd spoken to Amelia while in the carriage. Except, this time he let many more of his deeper thoughts make its way to the surface. <laughs> Why? One of which was a crucial realization that there actually could have been a better outcome. But didn't tell Amelia that, but he feels comfortable enough telling Frederica that because this kind of shows the vulnerabilities and insecurities that's bottled up inside. He doesn't want to seem weak in front of Amelia, but in front of a stranger, it's kind of better. Unlike what Subaru had thought before, a subtle clue to Rem's fate had been right in front of him the entire The letter, right? The blank letter. It all comes together. I know you guys have been making comments. I've been just waiting for the anime to like get there, but I don't think it's gonna happen at this rate. Like I think you guys even told me that the letter shit, it's not gonna happen in the anime. And the blank letter, right? The one that sent it, Rem. How does that make sense? Because it's blank. Everything that Rem now does just doesn't exist, right? No one else mentions Rem exactly. Rem is intentionally just gone too in episode 25. And like this letter, man, Right? The contents were written, but everything that Rem is is now forgotten, erased, right? That's why it's blank. Entire time. He just wasn't able to see it fast enough. If he did, then he might have been able to save Rem before the next checkpoint. When but, like, that's the cruel thing. 
It's too late. You think that having these checkpoints and regressions is going to help you. And it does, but sometimes shit like this happens where it's irreversible. You can't do anything about it anymore. But who sets these checkpoints? I'm not sure. It's a power most likely given by Satala. Can Satala override the checkpoints and go back? Probably, right? Wonder one day Super like begs Satala, please let me go back into a previous checkpoint if that would ever work. What he was referring to was the letter of goodwill that Crucia's envoy brought to Amelia. If you remember from season 1, Subaru's initial assumption with the letter was that the witch's cult swapped it out for a blank one, mm. thus causing Ram to assume that Krush was going to take action against Amelia. But it was the forgotten but Ram. that wasn't the case at all. Subaru only realized after that it wasn't the witch cult's style to resort to sly tactics like sleight of hand. They were more for that direct and upfront violence. So, if that was the case, then where did this blank letter come from? Well, Ram was the one who wrote the letter. By the time that letter would have been received by Ram, mm -hmm. her existence would have already erased. been erased from the world. It didn't make the physical letter itself disappear though. Instead, it just erased the contents. That's why the letter was blank. Her words had been erased along with everything else related to her memory. And like again, I'm just... I'm just like hoping that Ram has potential for two horns now because Ram doesn't exist anymore. If Subaru had come to this conclusion earlier, then he could have used this information to realize that something went wrong. In the end, he regretted not being smart enough to notice what was now such a glaringly obvious issue. <sighs> I don't blame you at all for this. This is crazy. How could you ever have caught that? It's too much. We were way too focused on the whale subjugation, then right after we are supposed to focus on the witch cult shit. By the time the letter happened, it was... Yeah... For sure, it, it was possible, it's not impossible to like really uh, try to understand that, but in the heat of the moment, all this shit, it's, <laughs> it's too hard. Iona Koji would have got it. Listen, Iona Koji would have even prevented a situation like this from happening. That's the difference, right? Iona Koji doesn't have to react to shit like this. He would have proactively made, made sure that none of this situation would have ever even happened. And that only added to his personal feelings of guilt. When the two finally arrived at Rem's room, the place looked completely tidied as if it was no different from a guest room. It was just as clean and empty as the time that Rem had her existence stolen by the White Whale. Exactly, right? All the furnace shit gone because everything related to Rem gone. Therefore, Ram, you got a second horn, Slits, or what? As Subaru rested her in her bed, Frederica offered to be the one to take care of her. But Subaru insisted that it had to be him. Sure, it may have been a selfish request, but it did make Frederica realize that behind Subaru's murderous gaze, there was a kind-hearted soul. <laughs> murderous gaze? <laughs> okay, I guess he was making some really angry faces. It's true that his eyes were showing a small glint of hatred, but Wrath. the comment was made more so with the intent of getting back at Subaru for his outburst with her teeth. That way, the two were now equal. Okay, it Subaru had an outburst with her teeth? Did he make a... J like a rude comment about it and she got kind of pissed off by it. But, you know, the fact that Subaru is like taking care of Rem to this extent is very heartfelt, right? Because remember, Rem was the emotional pillar of support. She was our foundation. She built us up when no one was there. And it felt like this unconditional love, which was quite one-sided in my opinion. I know that Subaru loves Rem, but not in the same way that he loves Amelia, right? The fact that he got all of that, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, like, does Subaru even deserve this shit? I think he does, because of season 2 shit. Deserve as in, does he deserve this blue-haired girl to be there no matter what, even he fucks up. But now, it's kind of ironic. It's like karma, where now he has to take care of her. She's gone, and nobody fucking remembers, and he has to suffer, right? So, it's just like this beautiful loop of, yeah, maybe he never deserved it, and now he's fucking paying for it? I don't know, but at the very least, he's actually very caring of Rem and not just saying, ah, oh, just, you know, just go with Amelia and not care about Rem anymore, bye-bye. In any case, Frederica would eventually have to take care of Rem, but really all she had to do was check up on her from time to time. Considering that Rem wasn't going to hunger or age, not much was needed to be done in terms of care. That's right, she's basically all just Subaru frozen really like this. All Subaru was for her to give Rem as much attention as she could offer. It's after this that we gain a bit more context behind who Frederica was before Subaru came to this world. Demi human. The main reason she was Old given leave from maid. her previous maid duties was because of Amelia's participation in the royal selection. What? Personal reasons she dropped out. Why? Because it's unsightly for a maid of Rosal Mather's mansion to be a demi human? 
There's prejudice and racism? What about Onis? As someone who had been working for Roswell for 10 plus years, Frederica's job was to tidy up all of Roswell's personal affairs before the royal selection was to start. Okay. You see, Roswell knew that Amelia being a candidate was an open invitation to all sorts of trouble. Absolutely. So, because Frederica was one of the senior staff members, he put her in charge of sending off all the other servants. It was after that job was done that she too was also sent away. Sent away for what only though? Ram and Ram as the last two servants. Why? This was the level of preparation that Roswell was known for. But now that just didn't seem to be the case. I don't understand what the preparation means here when you're just sending away all the other maids and tying up. What what that doesn't really make sense to me. Like what? How could he put so much effort into the events preceding the selection yet not do anything now? It I'm confused. Out of the safety? <laughs> Ram and Ram can be sacrificed, I don't care, but all the other ones, they gotta go. Because they've been working for me longer. Is that showing loyalty towards people that's, you know, show, you know, showing how much long they've spent time with Roswell? I I don't I don't know. <laughs> Hmm, interesting, but tidying up, huh? He's, he's keeping it airtight. Maybe there's a safety involved. Maybe there's, you know, potential of them uh, corrupted spies. I don't know, but interesting. But yeah, again, this guy, the levels of preparations that he's doing, he's not an aloof person that just randomly fucks off when the mansion is being attacked. No, he intentionally did it. This is the craziest thing. How can someone so smart, so cunning, someone so that plans ahead would do these acts because these acts are part of the plan? Why would they be part of the plan? Because he just expects Subaru to clean shit up? He has that much faith in the 17-year-old Neat after he showed up once saving Amelia's insignia? That's kind of hard to believe. Really? I don't know. We need to- Ah, fuck. I don't know, bro. This is the most confusing part. The preparation that Roswell was known for. But now that just didn't seem to be the case. How could he put so much effort into the events preceding the selection yet not do anything now? I don't know! It made Subaru remember all the times that the witch cult had successfully invaded the mansion and slaughtered everyone. He couldn't help but question why someone as seemingly careful as Roswell would allow that sort of thing to happen. Because it was intentional. He let it happen. This is all part of his plan. His future is still secured, even if everyone's fucks up. That's what Biko said. I don't know why. That's why Subaru felt the need to understand what Roswell was thinking. Can Roswell regress? Does he have the same power as Subaru? <laughs> Does he? Is that why he's fine with this shit? I don't know. Is he testing shit out? I, what the fuck is going on? That's the only other thing, right? Cause like, how is it fine for these runs to be over, bro? How does that make any sense? It brings us now to the scene with Beatrice. Just like everyone else, she wasn't given any instruction by Roswell during the recent events. The only judgment she could make was that she was left behind because Roswell was certain she could protect herself. Yeah, it's was not strong. like Roswell didn't give it any thought. It's just that not much was needed to be given. Now, even if that was the case, the way that he handled the entire situation still seemed off. So, to try and get a few more answers, Subaru brought out the Gospel. Okay, This was the book that go. formerly belonged to the Archbishop of Sloth. That's right. Oh, one second, guys. Just one second. I gotta take a piss. I'm sorry. I've, I've been, it's gonna be like a long reaction.
All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. During my piss, during my piss, I just thought about something. Okay, here is the theory that we're gonna go with from now. Right? Here, follow, follow me. So the theory is Roswell is being weird about everything because he's contradicting all the actions that he uh, he speaks of. Right? He he says that he wants to make Amelia the queen to slay the dragon. This is his goal. But everything he's done has fucked up. Like when Subaru shows up at the royal capital, Roswell was allowed that shit, and he was smiling when Subaru fucked up, right? Everything he does, him being absent during arc 2, arc 3, none of it makes sense. So, B could still said though, I'm different from Roswell, even if my future is not secured. All these different things hint that Roswell's still doing him. This is his plan. It's working out. Even though... All these runs are just fucked up and Subaru learns from it and overcomes it. Roswell's fine with it. Why? Because Roswell is regressing <laughs> along with Subaru. He has the same power. Hold on, hold on, let me cook, let me cook. And he sees Subaru as a useful tool, like a lab rat, right? Rather than Roswell himself struggling, he lets Subaru struggle, fuck up, and sometimes helps him out like an arc 2 with Ulgo I show at the end. So rather than him doing all the work, he's so careful and cautious, right? He's a very guy, he's like a very cautious person that's preparing. Therefore, he allows Subaru to take the charge, fuck up, then he regresses along with Subaru. <laughs> and sometimes he helps out when he realizes, okay, this is the time for me to come out and save. Right? Very cautious, safe person. That's the only way. That is the only way this makes sense because, again, all of his actions contradict what Subaru does. So, fuck it. E.T. is regressing, bro. Fuck it, he's regressing, I don't care. A being that wasn't quite a person, but instead an evil spirit that took control of other people's bodies. It Let's go back a bit. What was he saying here? Still seemed off. So, to try and get a few more answers, Subaru brought out the gospel. This was the book that formerly belonged to the Archbishop Juice. of Sloth. A being that wasn't quite a person, but instead an evil spirit that took control of other people's bodies. That's right, we know the possession stuff, but maybe I'm getting baited by that scene in Frozen Bond where there is a person that looks just like Better Goose, but has better skin care. So I thought that was Goose, but maybe that was someone else. I'm not sure, but we have heard him say this is the best body I've received in decades, right? When he took over Subaru's body, but yeah, he evil spirit jumps from one to another, right? Evil spirit that took control of other people's bodies. It was also the first person that Subaru had personally slain. Mm -hmm. The act of taking a person's life was yet another burden that Subaru had to shoulder. And not only that, slain him, took his fucking gospel, Signed it in red his with his blood, yet another right? This is the craziest shit. I'm never letting this go. The burden that Subaru had to shoulder. To say that he didn't hesitate in the moment or that he didn't have any Rental regrets would Goa. be nothing more than just a lie. The fact that he killed and was killed by Betelgeuse was something that he would forever remember and be- Absolutely. The amount of wrath portrayed in episode 15. Yeah, I mean, killing him was the goal. And Subaru- I mean- I guess he doesn't show remorse for killing, but the killing was also through rental Goa. It wasn't so personal like stabbing someone's fucking neck with a knife, but with all the anger and frustration, it makes sense. Thing that he would forever remember and be affected by. Now, the rest of their conversation pretty much went as we saw. Beatrice paved the path that Subaru needed to follow in order to find his answers and nothing more. Talk more when about Subaru went back to Amelia. He no, he's not talking about the witch factor. He's not talking about Biko's association with Juice. My, so he's passed on to... I know that's not cut content. I guess it was briefly mentioned, but fuck, I wanted to know about the witch factor. He was shocked to find out that she had already confronted Frederica about the path to Sanctuary. Because this was a place she knew she had to go to, Amelia turned to Subaru to ask a favor. I guess he's not going to talk about the witch factor, huh? So like, what is the witch factor? I don't know. It came out of Betrugus, and Biko said that like a witch factor, like why would you bother killing him if you're not going to take his witch factor, is what Biko said. The fact that Biko first line of thought was, you would never kill someone, like an archbishop, unless you're trying to take the witch factor, that is very condemning. And 
again, maybe I'm being stuck in a box right now, right? Because my assumption, all the logic right now stems from every Archbishop having a Witch Factor. Maybe only Better Goose has Witch Factor and the Archbishops doesn't. I'm not sure. And that's why Biko quickly referred to the Witch Factor as, you know, something that came from Sloth rather than everyone else. I don't know. But maybe the Witch Factor has... If we assume that every Archbishop has a Witch Factor, it's, it's some thing that cult members must take on to ascend and get a promoted position and beyond that i don't know maybe you get like i don't know we so what sloth witch factor or is there many different witch factors right so like is there a generic witch factor that applies to every archbishop or is there a specific witch factor for each archbishop of a specific sin these are things that we don't really know yet but wonder where the witch factor is now because we told better use and it's just gone. I don't think Super did anything unless signing the fucking gospel did something. Considering what happened the last time she did this, Subaru didn't even let her finish asking before he started spewing out all the reasons why he shouldn't be allowed to go with her to Sanctuary. You see, he thought Amelia was going to ask him to stay behind just like last time. <laughs> but what she really wanted to ask was for him to go with her. Amelia wanted to be able to rely on Subaru and his strength. Okay. She wanted him to be by her side. Wow. Because without him, she said that she would be too worried to go to Sanctuary on her own. Wow. They were sincere words that Subaru couldn't help but find himself speechless by. Riz? So, with the two now... Stockholm Syndrome. No, he sat right next to her, and she said, You know, I was really creeped out when you used to sit right next to me when we didn't know each other really well, but now I'm kind of okay with this. Stockholm Syndrome. Grooming. Natsuki... The groomer Subaru, that's right, I'm never letting that go. Said on going to Sanctuary, Frederica then asked if Roswell had told either of them about the type of place it was. Of course, Subaru knew nothing about it, but Amelia rem Remember Amelia's backstory? Yes, I understand Amelia's backstory, and that's why the grooming thing gets even more concerning. Because she's such a vulnerable victim, she's the perfect candidate to be groomed. Think about that. Remembered being told that it was a place that would someday be necessary for her. An ominous statement that even now she couldn't fully understand. Frederica then went on to tell the two all- No, I think that the term grooming, obviously, it, it, it's beyond just, you know, animal grooming, right? It's, it's usually a dynamic where the groomer is usually older and is- warping and molding the behavior and like how a younger person sees the world and therefore they being groomed right that's kind of how it works but you immediately assume that the person doing the grooming is older because they're going to be more intelligent and more aware about what, how things work in life the case here with Amelia is a bit different because she is a being that got frozen a long time ago and she has basically the mindset of a child right she thinks that, you know, Subaru is like a child, like 12, 13 year old, but Amelia herself, she doesn't even know what date love really is. Like, she is very clueless, clueless and unaware. And in this situation, even if Amelia is physically older or whatever, I think that Subaru is definitely more aware. And specifically about the love part, I think the grooming does make sense. All that she possibly could about Sanctuary. One of the things she mentioned was why she needed two days to prepare for their journey. Supposedly, the barrier that keeps outside presences away takes two days to nullify. At first, it was a strange concept to grasp, but the more context Frederica gave, the more sense it made. You see, Sanctuary has long been a place that's deeply rooted with demi-human history. What <laughs> the fuck? Oh, Wilhelm, I think. What do we know about the Sanctuary? Based on Frederica's words, it was all about, you have the location, you have the qualification. Don't know what that really means. And then now you need the resolve and just willpower to overcome it. So it's like, overcome what? What challenges, bro? When the conflict between demi-humans and humans was at its peak. Sang right, demi-humans and humans at its peak. So this is the war that was mentioned in uh, the Frozen Bond, right? There was a dialogue between uh, people saying like, demi-humans lost, right? The humans won. I'd love to know the lore about that war. Demi-human versus human war in the past. Because like in Dragon Kingdom Lugunica, you still see demi-humans, you know, roam around. But of course, there's like specific bars only for demi-humans and humans aren't allowed. Since humans was at its peak, Sanctuary could be seen as a sort of... Teresia carried in the war? Well, here's the thing. My theory becomes even more... more, more, more uh, uh, you know how I said that Lai is the... Uh, the bastard child of Teresia 
because Wilhelm was a deadbeat husband. Yeah, Teresia definitely fucked a demi-human during the war or took a demi-human as a a, a, a criminal, uh, sorry, a prisoner of war and, and fucked it. Yep. Mm -hmm. My theory is coming to fruition. Yep. Of safe haven for demi-humans. Or at least that's the way that Frederica was portraying it. Something about the way that she spoke of the barrier still felt weird, though. In any case, what she was saying about the demi-humans seemed to be what made the most sense. Okay. I mean, it was quite common to find residents of the Gunica that weren't too fond of demi-humans at all. Mm -hmm. It was a feeling of scorn that Subaru found to be an extension of the same hate they carried towards half-elves. I think it's not even the same, right? Like, 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 hating demi-humans versus hating half-elves. In, in terms of, like, the degree of racism... I think that demi-human hate, I don't know really, but maybe it's like a 4 or a 5 out of 10, right? I think that hate on half elf, like they call her a fucking half devil, half wit, right? Like they think that she's the next coming of the Antichrist, so it's like a 10 out of 10 on a racism level, right? All this talk of demi-humans then reminded Subaru of a bard he met that goes by the name of Liliana. Who the fuck are you? What? <laughs> Liliana Masquerade, uh, sure, when did we meet you? While on one of her journeys, she had stopped by the Roswell Mansion to sing a tale of the demi-human civil war. What? <laughs> what content is this? They, she played for us and it was more context about Wilhelm and Teresia and demi -war. Okay. A song that went by the name of the Ballad of the Sword Devil. The Ballad of the Sword now, Devil. He had the Sword Devil or the Sword Demon is, you know, right, uh, sorry, uh, Wilhelm's title. He didn't even realized that this was a song wholly dedicated to Wilhelm's accomplishments. But now he knew that it could very well have been the reason that Wilhelm gained the Sword Devil nickname in the first place. Anyway, Subaru would then spend the next couple of days trying to search for Beatrice. He didn't want to let things stay the way that they were. But when Beatrice really wants to hide, well, there isn't much that Subaru yeah, can do. Yeah, we to couldn't find her. a door anymore. That's why Subaru put Petra in charge of taking care of Beatrice, as unlikely as it was for. <laughs> How would would Biku allow Petra to come in? Could Petra ever find this shit? Them to meet. It did help knowing that someone in the mansion would be there for her if she ever needed it. Okay. Perhaps she could actually befriend her since they looked to be the same age. <laughs> They look to be the same. This bitch 400 years old. Which is actually kind of interesting now. Because, like, think about it. Right? What else is 400 years? The white whale's terror on the kingdom is 400 years. Huh. What is happening here? That's two points of 400 years. Something happened 400 years ago. Right? Biku was born, White Whale was created, what the fuck is going on 400 years ago? With everything now said and done, all that was left was for- I'm not theorizing that she's 400, I know she's 400 because we saw an anime chart video where it was like, age of characters in anime you would never guess, which is a spoiler for sure, but I don't mind it being a spoiler because like, now I know that, it lets me theorize about the White Whale's number as well, and I probably shouldn't know that. But in terms of the content, I think that it's good. It's better this way. Frederica to give Amelia the crystal. Part of the two days of preparation was focused towards this item in particular. The odd thing about it was that Frederica never left the mansion to obtain it. It made Subaru wonder where she managed to find Roswell. such an item without Roswell. even having to go outside. Wherever it was from, the two days weren't just spent on this alone. The crystal was merely something related to it. Okay. Now, the last thing that Frederica would say before sending them off was to once again be wary of Garfield. Garfield. Ah, it's fine. So I think this is the guy beside Biko in the third cover pick, right? Third season. We have Otto, Biko, and there's another blonde dude. I don't know if this guy is blonde, but the hairstyle I think matches Garfield, right? Ever since she had first mentioned his name, Subaru had been struggling to deal with two conflicting mindsets. What? This wasn't the first time that he's heard the name Garfield. Right really? before the evacuation of the villagers, Ram had spoken of a Garfield as if it was someone that she could trust. Did she? In the anime season? I don't remember that. Maybe this is cut content. But with Frederica now passing on these numerous warnings about him, Subaru wasn't so sure what to think anymore. He wished that Frederica could have told them more, but unfortunately she had made a vow not to. To Subaru, Vows and promises were just elegant wordplay. Right, but like, these things exist, right? Like, 
Remember, a pact, a contract, a covenant, they're all separate things. And now we even know the existence of an oath, right? But a vow, is this just loose shit or what? I wished that Frederica could have told them more. But unfortunately, she had made a vow not to. A vow and an oath, is it interchangeable or is this similar? Because like in ReZero, these words, these nouns, these, these synonyms, it's very intentional, right? It's a specifically a pact, a covenant, a contract, right? An oath. So like, vow is different from an oath? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. To Subaru, vows and promises were just elegant wordplay. But to almost everyone else in this fantasy world, vows were a holy pledge that should never be violated. Holy pledge. Amelia herself personally felt that any kind of pact, covenant, or oath should be upheld with the utmost respect. Yeah. To her, promises of any kind were very important. They are. They were practically the- Specifically a spirit art user, Puck said that it's so important you should never break a promise. I thought that had to do with, you know, the whole uh, foundation of the contract made between a spirit and a spirit art user, but... The equivalent of tying two people together through a bond of mutual trust. Even if no one was around to hold you accountable to your promises, she felt that it was still right to uphold them since the other party believes that you will do so. When Subaru heard Amelia speak these words with such conviction, he felt the need to apologize for when he broke his own promises with her. So okay. as he prostrated himself on the floor of the carriage, Amelia explained that it was a mindset that stems from her experience as a spirit mage. It's only natural that she treats some- Spirit mage? It's the same shit, right? A spirit art user? Something like Pax sent promises with such importance, since the very foundation of her relationships with the spirits are built on them. Don't get me wrong though, she wasn't mad at Subaru for treating these things lightly. She simply felt that it was something that he needed to reflect on a little bit more. Yeah. Anyway, the two would eventually reach the Lost Woods where the whole- This was so stupid. This scene here... <laughs> I cannot even like bring to words how stupid the actions of Subaru was. Because Frederica said, wear this shit? You need this to cross the barrier. Okay. We're getting in there, and now it's glowing. I think that we're about to cross the barrier. Super takes it off of her. She knocks her. She passes out. And then he is the one that just goes solo in. It's just, why, bro? I know you're trying to save Amelia. Maybe you thought the glowing thing is going to blow up on her neck. But, like, I don't know. That's, uh, what are you doing? The situation with the crystal would occur. Super likened the phenomenon he'd experienced to something similar to Beatrice's passage skill. He'd been huh? I still don't really know exactly what happened here other than Beatrice somehow opened the fucking hole in space and it was like, you know, a wormhole, right? You got fucking sent through it and then boom, you got dropped off into highway. Exposed to passage more than enough times to know what it was like to be teleported. Assuming the crystal didn't have nearly as much power as- Even the passage here, right? It's a similar concept with opening a door. Sometimes Bieko's room is there, sometimes it's not, right? The whole passages, the hidden passages, right? It's, it's the same shit, right? Assuming the crystal didn't have nearly as much power as Beatrice did, he figured that he wasn't too far from where Amelia and Otto were. Okay. I mean, the farthest Beatrice had ever been able to teleport him was to the village. Yeah. So perhaps if he found a clearing somewhere, then he could spot where the carriage was. But before he could choose a direction, that's when he spotted the doll-like elf. This was the only way that Subaru could describe her. Doll-like elf. Straight up passage from the Everything anime. About her I'm gonna assume that she's a literal doll then, and there's like a soul planted on her. Her just seemed so emotionless. She didn't even seem to have enough willpower Coup to be an actual person. Regardless, and her and remember pointy ears. That's a very important distinction. Pointy ears, kudere lolly, doll. I don't know. Is a soul planted into you? She was the only lead that Subaru had. So after following, then losing track of her. Subaru eventually figured that Amelia was the one who was supposed to be teleported. Uh -huh. If that was in fact the case, then he decided the best course of action would be to play along with whatever was going on. A decision that would lead him down a path into the ruins and finally to his fateful encounter with Echidna. Echidna! Bringing us to the end of episode 2 and to the end of this cut content. The Witch of Greed. And what did Echidna say? I see. So that is the root of your desires. Echidna understood that Subaru's desire, everything the driving factor is to save Amelia, to love Amelia. And she found that interesting. But she also seemed very lonely and bored because she said it's been so long since I've had a conversation. 
And he said, maybe I did something wrong, but next episode, man, conversation with her. When the Windows XP, tea party shit, let's go. End of episode 2 and to the end of this cut content. So clearly this episode wasn't as eventful as the last one, but a much larger story is being built here, and hopefully this video allowed you to enjoy it a little bit more. Okay. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so much, Mr. Any News, for the video. Guys, Go, please go like it. Please check out his channel if you haven't. I just wish that I wanted to, you know, get more information about the witch factor. But watching this video, we got a couple new theories, right? <laughs> we have the uh, Art Bishop Sin of Gl Gluttony is potentially the bastard child because Teresia cheated on Wilhelm on a demi. <laughs> no, that's a fucking meme stupid theory. I love it, though. It's stupid as fuck, though. And then the other one is, which I think that I might be cooking. Even if I don't have all the details correct, I'm really trying to understand and think outside the box of how Roswell's action makes sense. But if he does have regression-like powers, if he is truly using Subaru as, like, like a prototype rat to go in first, fuck up, then he learns what to do. Like, I think that makes a lot of sense. But, hey, that's it for me. I'll see you on the next one.